Justice Smith with Proverbs Media Group, and today I have one of my most cherished, beloved guests, someone that is so important for all of you to get to know, a woman who has changed my life and has changed countless others. With no further ado, I introduce to you the most illustrious Elaine Beck. <laughs> I love it. I've never been introduced like that before, and it makes me feel very special. Thank you. Absolutely. That that was fun. Um, I, I don't see myself that way, but um, it's an honor uh, for someone to speak so highly of me. So thank you. Absolutely, it's well deserved. Oh, you're kind. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to ask you to begin. What? are you all about? I want to give the viewers some context, where you come from, what motivates you, what brought us here today? Oh man, that's a big question. Um, you know, for the first 62 years of my life, I was the average as sliced bread. I was born into a very poor family. Uh, and actually I was born in West Virginia, although my parents lived in Pennsylvania and, uh, I spent my entire life uh, striving to please others and to uh, learn uh, how to overcome who I was because uh, my mother, God rest her soul, um, was raised in a very evil environment. And some of that always falls over to the next generation. And so... Uh, I struggled with trying to please my mother and trying to make her happy and, you know, that type of thing. And so I was really a very rather insecure person. You wouldn't believe it today, but I was very insecure. I had a babysitter say one time to me as when I grew up, she said, I used to watch you. You can't be the same person because the little girl I watched, I always knew where you were. You were hiding in the bottom of the closet. Now that tells you a little bit about how insecure I was. And then um, I moved on from that. Um, and, and it was very significant that although I felt abused in my younger life, that um, I ended up to get away from my mother, I married a man who abused me for 17 and a half years. And so I know poverty. I know sorrow. I know hardship. I know uh, what it's like to, you know, raise three children uh, on my own. Um, I, I did all that. And through all of that, though, after the first 33 years of my life where I felt abused, and I was, uh, my husband never said anything good about me. I was worthless, useless, and nobody else would want me. And so um, I... I strove to overcome that because of some Sunday school teachers I had, uh, in particular one, uh, that was part of my life as a young child because my parents didn't go to church. Mm -hmm. They sent me to church because it was a cheap babysitter. And so um, I went to church on Sundays, but I went to church at a very low-keyed uh, Christian church um, I won't put a name on it, what, what denomination it was, because that's not fair to the churches now. They've changed so. But I will say that it was very repetitive stories of the Bible every year, the same. No encouragement to read the Bible on your own. No encouragement. So I relied on who spoke to me. And that was the Sunday school teacher that I had from first grade through 12th grade. Mm. And he was an amazing man. Uh, but... On with my life, uh, after that, God started showing me that I was a worthy person. And he started showing me by stepping in when I was struggling to raise my children and struggling to become my own person and giving me talents and gifts that I didn't know I had because I never went to college. I never had opportunities to learn, you know, great things or to be somebody. I was just Elaine Beck, or excuse me, Elaine Eichelberger at that time. And so, you know, through life's trials and stuff, God kept stepping in. Oh, what an amazing God we have. Mm. I mean, I could go on and on for years on all of the wonderful stories of how he picked me up and dusted me off and pushed me forward. And how he stepped in and gave me words I didn't even know. And how he 
put people in my life that became my angels that helped me to go forward. And, um, and eventually after through the sorrows and stuff and after raising my children and praise the Lord, I was able to do that. I give him all the glory for everything in my life. And after all of that, um, at 62, I met the most wonderful man of my life. And that was my husband, Bob, who passed away five years ago. Mm -hmm. But in the 10 years that I had him, he turned my whole world around and upside down. And he only did it by the grace of God because he was a very godly man, a very strong conservative Christian, a very good person with a great heart. He gave and did for everyone. And right before I met him, I prayed to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'm almost out of money. I have no way to keep going on. But if you will give me money, you know my heart, Lord. He always gave me a good heart and a forgiving heart. And so I said, you know my heart. And you know that if you give me money, I will always share it. I will always help others. I will always strive to serve you. And it was around a month to two months later that Bob Beck came into my life. And he changed my life forever. And not that I'm a different person. The beautiful thing is all those trials that you go through and have in your life, they are how God molds you into the person he wants you to be. So don't be afraid to bring all that garbage and lay it before his feet because he's there with open arms and he will take that garbage and he will turn it in to joy magnified. Mm. So, um, you know, I, I feel so blessed that even the year before Bob passed away six years ago, God gave me a vision of what I'm doing today. And every day is a joy and a pleasure and a new adventure and a new word from God. And I would, I would want that for everyone. So there's why I'm here and why I'm serving God and a little bit about my life. Wow. I just got to say, you are so inspiring. You're so courageous. You are just absolutely amazing. It's ineffable. There are no words in the English lexicon that I know of that can <laughs> actually describe you. It's it's so touching and I, I relate to your story, having been raised by a single mother and seeing right? what she had to go through to raise me. Right. She had to deal with me, you know, it wasn't easy. But I have so much respect for what you've accomplished and through all the tribulations, the alchemy that you were able to accomplish by taking those bad things, everything you had gone through, and making it into something so beautiful whereby you could bless the world and be a blessing everywhere you go. And I have to give her her credit too. Anyone into parapsychology at home, this woman genuinely has like psychic oratorship. She is so tapped in with the big guy upstairs. <laughs> Anything I know I'm about to say, it's like she knows right before I'm about to say it, it's happened at least 50 times. So. I just have to give you your credit there. Oh, I vouch, you, that's you. my well, testimony. It's because I listen to God. Yes. And, and I, I would say that if there's a gift you should strive to, to get in your life, get the gift of listening to God. Mm. You don't have to listen to anybody else. <laughs> you don't. You just have to listen and hear and don't be afraid to accept that it's God. Mm. If you have a good thought about something, even if it's a stranger across the room that you should go over and pray for them because they look sad. Or even if it's something as simple as, you know, um, uh, giving a hug to somebody or being in the checkout line. I do this often. Checkout line or wherever I'm at in a restaurant or whatever. I love to say to people, you know what? You've got the most beautiful smile. Or you know what? I really love your sweater today. That's a very pretty color on you. Do you know how many grades and levels that brings uh, that person closer to the joy of the Lord? Mm. Just words like that, just a compliment. You know, we can all find fault. Mm. And the world is so good at it these days. It's one of the biggest concerns I have for the world. The darkness is darker because we all help it. 
we all say the negative and the 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 sad and the hurt and and the anger of what's happening try looking for the good in people looking for the good in yourself looking for the greatness of god listen for his words it's amazing amen wow absolutely amazing always so well put thank you i am curious yeah this is something i haven't gotten to ask you much about okay one of the best ways in my estimation that we can give reverence and homage to the lord is through music yes what is your favorite music oh my goodness i i pretty much listen mainly to christian music mm -hmm. because i listen mainly to christian shows and um i have a I have an understanding of God in that putting on the full armor means surrounding him around you mm. all the time. Mm. And yes, we I live a real life too. I've got family and friends and I shop and I I move and I decorate and I have all of those things in my life, but he's part of all of it. Okay? And so um music to me is a way of sharing your true heart. Mm. And so um, my favorite one of some of my favorite Christian songs are um, I can only imagine. Classic. Uh, the latest one that I love and sing over and over and speak these words to God all day long because I'm not a singer, but <laughs> I speak these words to him all day long. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. Mm. All my beautiful. life, I've been held in your hands. That's how the song goes. And there's much more to it. And that's my way of praising God every day is through that song. Because it exemplifies the truth about who he really is and why we should love him. Just in the few words in that song. So please do yourself a favor Look for it, hunt for it, listen to it, and then memorize it because it really is one of the greatest way to praise God is through music. That's what he says. And as far as any other music, I, I love the long hair, as they call it. I love uh, classical music. I love the big band sound because when I was a little girl, very little girl, that's what I heard. My dad and mom came from the hills of West Virginia and Pennsylvania, and uh, my grandparents were coal miners. So, you know, we listened to a lot of country music, okay? Um, I was the, the kid in school. Uh, I, was, I was a teenager in the 60s. And so I was the kid in school that when they were all ooing and aahing and passing out over Elvis, <laughs> okay. I was in love with Eddie Arnold. Mm. <laughs> this older, older man. Maybe that's why I like older men so much. Mm. That could be it. You know, uh, I always admired and loved my dad. Mm. I always, uh, he was one of my greatest heroes. Uh, faults and all, we all have. Mm. But he was a man of integrity, total integrity. Mm. And so I could look up to him and I could count on him. And uh, he's been gone now for 27 years. Uh, and But I know he's up in heaven along with all the rest of my family and friends and stuff that I'm going to get to see again someday. Almost can't hardly wait for that. But um, yeah, music is, uh, as I shared with the young people in China when I went over there, on a mission trip, that music is an international language because the tones, the sounds, the the beauty of the instrument and what it produces in the right hands, mm. not the wrong hands, <laughs> and, and all that. I love it, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm I'm pretty diversified. I will go and listen to most any music. The one that I'm not as crazy about is uh, I don't like all jazz. 
Hmm. Now, there's some good jazz and there's some bad jazz. Oh, yeah. Just like there's even some good rap mm -hmm. and there's some bad rap. Mm -hmm. But I would say those are the ones that I'm like, I'm particular about. Um, but, you know, as far as the other music, I enjoy it. I love it. Um, I went to see Andre Butelli mm. uh, in uh, the spring of this year. Uh, spent an hour and a half with him and his family. It was magnificent. Um, his voice uh, makes me shudder and, and chill at listening to it and tear up, mm. uh, as does so many others. But that's my music. I love that. I love that. You mentioned having grown up in the 60s. Right. I'm really curious as a 26 year old, what do you think are the biggest differences you've seen in the world from the culture to the media to the general attitude of the people, the spirit of the people? What's changed since then to now? Wow, that's a good one. I think the biggest thing that has changed is we have become too open. Mm. There's no privacy anymore. There's no respect of self. Because when you, when you open yourself to the world on media, especially, and stuff, how do you project respect for yourself and others? Because we tend to make judgment on everything we see. We're human. God gave us this ability to make choices. And they are either good or evil. Mm. They really are. And so, you know, we see something bad happening. We tend to see it that way in our mind. And we pass judgment on it. Although the Bible tells us not to judge. It's very hard to grow. It's very hard and it takes work and it takes the love of God and to want to be better and to strive to be more like Jesus every day. And, and that's how I live. But there was times when, you know, when I was younger and I saw the things changing in the world and it made me angry and upset. I mean, I recall, uh, you mentioned some of the things that the gifts that God has given me. I recall in my 20s, God showing me what would be happening today. Mm. And in little bits and pieces. And me seeing things happen in the world. And uh, uh, one example that always stands out in my mind was when they first started bringing cars from overseas over. And immediately, I understood the impact of it. I knew immediately that what we were going to see was a change in balance throughout the world, that we were no longer our own people. We were giving up our privacy. We were becoming less of a community of love and caring about each other and more of a worldly thinking people because now we were allowing other people's ideas and values and stuff into our world. And so we can be happy that, you know, now we can know what's happening in Israel because we love the Jewish people. We know that that's God's family. We know it's God's chosen people. We care about them. But by the same token, there's so many things that we see that are so ugly that it's sort of hard for a brain to wrap around particularly for the children of this day and age. You know, when I look at people like yourself, you're 50 years younger than me, exactly. Okay, I'm 76, you're 26. When I look at people like you, I have to say to myself, what has it been like to grow up in a world that's already fallen mm. around you? That you may have at your fingertips the ability to do great things on a computer and change the world. You're doing that with our studio now, and I'm so blessed for it because you have a heart of God. So you're going to use the new age things in a way that will be positive for the Lord. 
too many people don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. And they use it to devolve our world. And so I, I think that, you know, when I was young, we still had fights. <laughs> we still got angry at each other. We still got sick and stuff, but not as bad and mm. not as much. You know, we got rid of polio. Mm. Uh, we got rid of things that were things that were you were able to do. Now we're destroying our world with plastics and foods that aren't fit for human intake mm. in our country. Mm. And uh, when I look at, you know, I mean, even as a young mother, I raised my own garden. I took care of it. I ha I canned. I, I cooked fresh from the garden every night, every morning, all day long. You know, I was the mother on the block that made six loaves of bread at a time and everybody come over to eat. It was joyful, but it was hard. But you know what? My hard life gave me a heart that is bigger than the mountains of Tucson mm. because I understand, and it's why I give so freely. I understand what it's like to do without, excuse me. I understand the people in this country that are struggling right now and that they are living in a world where a government has stepped in to control them, to take things away from them, including food and necessities and medication, and to give it away to people that have crossed our border openly because they've allowed it. And, and they're giving to people other than the people that saved this country, the veterans that struggle every day. Some of them don't have homes. I work in my community to make it better for them. I do all I can. Only God can save this world. People need to reach out to him more. Amen. Can I get you a tissue box? Yeah. yeah. He's got some right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's, that's so beautiful. Thank you for speaking from the heart in this way. I mean, I'm so touched by what I'm hearing. You are an angel. <laughs> I just... I'm so impressed by you. I love, absolutely. We have so much in common. We do. We really do. I feel like we look at the world the same way, same lens. Yeah. And I just think it's so amazing what you've been able to accomplish and do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, we talked about this earlier, that that 50 years may have changed the outside world and made people more looking to, into the darkness than, the, than we should have. And, and giving them opportunities to uh, think that they can live by uh, what's at the bottom of a bottle or what's mm. uh, what's on in a pill or, you know, that they've been spoiled to the point where they think that the world owes them mm. and, and that we've allowed people to invade our country. That's what's happening at the border, the invasion of our country. Mm. Um but the truth of the matter is, is you are like a son to me because you are what any mother would want to have in a young man. Someone your age who has not been afraid to fight to become a good person, to study hard, to learn what is important, not just in a book, but by looking to God and trusting him. And we've talked about that already today. All that I've ever done is really trust God. Mm. I haven't accomplished anything. He does it through me. And you have opened yourself up to the same thing at a very young age. You took the opportunity to make choices on your own that any mother would respect. And I, I think that you know, as we spoke earlier, that it's not about, you know, how much you know as as in the knowledge out of books and what you can do. Those are important. And you're making a great difference here and now. By the same token, 
the values that we have together that we trust God, we know he exists, we don't ever question it, we listen for him, we pray to him, we honor him, we think about him in every decision we make, whether it's how we dress Mm. or how we uh, speak to others, how we, you know, uh, deal with anxiety or issues, you know, um, I think it's, I've grown through the years, obviously, and I've matured. Praise Jesus. Amen. Right? But, and you've got a lot of things to go through yet. You've never had a family. You've never been married. You've never, you've got so much to look forward to. And I think that's so vital. But you are a mirror image of me in the eyes of God as are all people. And Mm. that's what I want people to understand through our show, that yes, there's darkness out there. There is horror, horror. How else do you describe child abuse, Mm. pornography, uh, sex trade? Uh, How do you describe those things unless you accept that they are the horror of this world, that they are total evil, Mm -hmm. total without a doubt. Absolutely. But at the same time, all of that is overcomable, not through us, but through God. He gets to use us though, because we're open to let him use us. And I see that in you already. And you talk about admiring me. I admire you even more because you have all of this to look forward to. And I can only imagine like the song title, I can only imagine what God has in store for you. And I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch and I'm going to enjoy the show. Amen. Thank you. It's very kind of you to say, and it means a lot to me. Thank you. You know, I mean it too. Absolutely. The respect is deeply mutual. Yes. Deeply. Thank you. Absolutely. You touched on a few things that I want to go back to. Okay. Some of the issues facing the country right now, and they're all interconnected in this really jumbled, tangled web. And I think that if we can figure out where the base of this is and pull the rug, maybe we can untangle most of these issues without having to tackle the individuals. But some of these individual issues that I'm looking at, for example, drugs, immigration, how these things are connected, our southern borders open. This administration has given an open ticket to people to come here. In many cases, the South American countries are emptying their psych wards and prisons and sending them up here where they can come in without any identification. They're given more money than the average American makes, and they're being flown out, put in hotels. I find this a little terrifying. My mother immigrated here legally. This country has lots of immigration and diversity, and that's one of our strong values and powers. That's a good thing. But when we open up our border and just let anyone come in, it's not, there are good people out there who are running for asylum and need help, but there are also people who are gonna take advantage. There's terrorists, there's child traffickers, there's rapists and serial killers. Absolutely. It's unreal, it's unreal. Well, my view on that is the same as yours, that it's there and it exists. But my bigger view is this, If we as Christians, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if all of us would finally stand up for God and dedicate ourselves to not taking any more and saying, no, you can't do this, and no, you can't have our children, and no, you can't change our language, and no, you can't... um, indoctrinate our children rather than teaching them. And no, you can't have an open border. And no, you can't sex traffic children. If we would all stand together, instead of knowing it's next door and doing nothing about it, or in our street, or that that you know people that are, are doing these evil things and you're not speaking out, um, it's only going to get worse as long as we're not brave. God showed us in the Old Testament even, before the New Testament came along, that he can destroy the world the snap of a finger. He can destroy a whole country. (coughs) Excuse me. 
I'm going to take a little drink here. He can do anything mm-hmm. and everything, and he will, and he does. Mm. And so he asks us, all he asks of us is to love him first and love our neighbor as ourself. Mm. And doesn't that sound simple? Absolutely. You know, when I was growing up, the golden rule was taught to every child. For the first thing they could hear, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Don't hit your sister. Don't bite your sister. You know, don't hurt your brother. You know, be nice to her. Be kind. If you're upset about that, go tell your teacher. If you need this, go speak to mom or dad. If there's a problem, seek wisdom. Mm. These are all biblical things. Mm. And they are that simple. But we've pushed God so far out of the room and we've out of our hearts and we don't teach all of our children out of the Bible anymore. We teach them, you know, horrible things. There are books in our schools across this nation that shouldn't be allowed in any place, let alone a a kindergarten or a first through sixth grade class at all. Let alone the teachers in this country that are as vicious and confused and and unfit uh, as they are. It, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. There are wonderful teachers. Mm. There are good people. There are superior families. There are good people that are Christians. There are good people that fight for what is right. But the number that isn't is exactly what my husband said the year before he died. He said, we have crossed a barrier that should have never been crossed. There are more people seeking to benefit themselves and their greed and their need in their minds than those that trust God and seek him first. Mm. Therefore, we are in the biggest battle of our life. If we don't save our country now, if we don't vote for Donald J. Trump, instead of the evil empire that is running our country right now, we won't have a country. Mm. So I call on all Christians, put God first in your life. Amen. And remember that it's the values that we had as children that will change our world back to right. And that's what God's going to help us do. Don't think you're alone. He's in this. You stand up for him. He will come down and fight for us. He will make things right. He shows it to me every day. We have to trust it. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. And You mentioned one of my favorite people alive right now, Donald J. Trump. (laughs) Yes. And as a personal friend of his, do you have any inside stories, maybe an experience you've had with him that you could tell us about? My. Well, it started with the first time I met him. I had gone to a rally and uh, I got the honor of getting to have my picture taken with him. Mm. And it was a sad day and a joyful day. Because six months earlier, my wonderful husband had passed and gone home to be with the Lord. Mm. And I decided I was going to go meet President Trump. And when I got there, you know, you're told when you go in the picture line that you don't have a lot of time to talk. And you just, you know, if he reaches out to shake your hand, you put your hand out and shake it. And... You go by what he talks to you about or what he asks you questions or whatever. You don't just keep offering everything. And I will, I remember this like it was moments ago. It became my turn in line. He walked forward towards me. He put his hand out and I put my hand out and he didn't stop there. When he took my hand, he took his other hand and he clasped my hand. And he looked at me and he said, well, it's wonderful to meet you. And I said, you know, President Trump, 
I'm here for my husband as well, who passed away six months ago. Because he would have given anything to meet you. He admired you so. And all of a sudden, we became the only two people on earth. That's what it felt like. Wow. Because that's who he is. He immediately started asking me questions about, what did your husband do? So I told him how he had a manufacturing plant in uh, Pennsylvania. And I, I interjected that now his son was running the, the business. And he said, well, you tell your son, son, my stepson, you tell him thank you for having a industry like that in our country, mm. in the state of Pennsylvania. And, you know, you remind him, you know, to keep going and doing the great job that he's been doing and that his father did. And it wasn't a long conversation, but it was a conversation of a man who didn't have to say that to me, who didn't have to take the time to have a conversation with me. I've had my picture taken with him and, and met with him and sat at a table next to him at a round table several times. And we spoke less because there were so many people, or we spoke quickly because there were so many people involved. But at the same time, he knew right then and there that I needed words of encouragement, and he provided them. Mm. And I've seen that him do this to people over and over and over and over again. I have talked to the people that work with him and have worked with him for years that tell me, you would never believe how many people in this country he has stopped and helped. One story that was shared with me just a few months ago when I was down at Mar-a-Lago, his uh, chauffeur told me, he said, you know, one day I was taking President Trump to an event and we're going down the road. And he said, there's this person pulled along the road, obviously in distress. Mm. And he goes, stop the car, pull over, stop the car. And he said, go see if we can help him. So he said, have him come talk to me. So he brought him around and he said, you know, what seems to be the problem? And it was something to do with a tire or something simple, not major, but he didn't have a spare or something, and he gave him a ride. Wow. And and insisted that they help him get somebody over there to take care of his car. And you think to yourself, wow, what a nice guy. You know, what a simple little everyday nice guy. It didn't stop there, though. Mm. After he had this conversation in the car with him, and he told him how much he respected President Trump and stuff, and how much an encouragement he was to him. He went back and he told them that they should send him, and I, I can't tell you what it was, but it was a huge, magnificent gift wow. to this man to make his life better because he was struggling so much. Hmm. Now, you can say that, you know, that sounds like something anybody that has his money could do. But is it somebody who has his money who would always do that? Mm. And he always does it. Absolutely. He takes care of more people than you could count if you started counting and quit when you died. He has done <laughs> so much for the American man speaking one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. one -on -one with families and stuff, not because he's the president. This started clear back when he was, you know, managing and, and building buildings around the world. He's always helped the man in need. He never walks away from the man in need. It's very biblical what he does. Mm. And, you know, people question whether he's a Christian or not. Don't question it anymore. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, that man 
stands with God. He may have to agree to do things in a fair and reasonable way to do what's right in this country and to be, he tries to be balanced in his love and respect for all people Mm -hmm. because he knows that's his job as it's our job. We're not to be uh, disagreeable to anybody, even if we don't agree with their Mm -hmm. lifestyle, Mm -hmm. we're not to be disagreeable. And that man does that so well. And I I couldn't respect him more. And it's not about what he's done for my country. It's about the man that he stands up for all people individually as well. Absolutely. I got to know what you think about the recent attempt on his life. The media doesn't want to paint it for what it is. But if you ask me, that is a miracle the biggest miracle ever caught on camera in this century. This is mega, megalithic, I'd like to call it. Yeah, I like but that. It's uh, it's incredible. I mean, just by like a centimeter, had he not tilted his head, we could have lost our president. The country could have been in shambles. Who knows what could have happened thus That's after. right. That's right. And thank God. Well, you know, I just got through saying, if you doubt that he's a Christian, Mm-hmm. He is loved by God. Oh, yeah. He was chosen by God. Oh, yeah. I told him that to his face in front of a room full of people. Mm. I went up on stage with him one time. And I shared the fact that God chose this man. Mm. And he is uh, listening to what God has asked him to do. And, you know, what cracks me up is these people that think that because, you know, he speaks the truth in love out loud, not always in the most friendly way, that that makes him a bad person. You tell me anybody that's ever had their their thumb hit by a hammer mm. that didn't say something about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that didn't say something or at least think something really ugly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. This man gets hit all the time. His family gets hit all the time. He is under attack constantly. I give him that he can be upset and show it. Mm -hmm. I give him that he can speak the truth about people that are being ugly and horrible and wicked in this country. Mm. I think we all owe him that ability And I know that God may wish for him at times even to be a little more quiet. But God loves him. Mm -hmm. He loves all of us. Mm -hmm. Imperfections and all. And if you can show me another man on this earth that could do more for this country and has already proven it, I'll vote for him. Mm -hmm. But until you do, he is the man. That's right. That God chose. Mm -hmm. He is the one that we need to rely on to do what God wants done in this country. Mm. And if we all stood and did that, we don't, we're not going to have worries. Are we still going to have troubles? Like I told you back when I was a kid, there was fights, there was disagreements. People didn't like it, but we punched each other in the nose. We didn't get out a gun and kill someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's one thing for two young men to get in a fist fight over a girl. It's another thing for men and women alike to go around shooting people because they didn't get their own way. Do you know that the biggest percentage of the arguments in this country that end up with a gun and a death or an injury start with the most simplest, stupidest reason on earth, you know, you you yelled at my kid. You you stepped on my property. You think you're better than me. You, you I mean words that really unless you take them on mean nothing. Mm. I answer to one person, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. God. The Trinity. That's who I answer to. You know, I get bad news every once in a while. People get hard on me. 
they they put me down for my beliefs. They put me down for my love of country, for my patriotic attitude. But they can't hurt me. That's right. They can't touch me. They can't make me feel bad because I won't take on their vision of me. I look to God for who I am. I listen to him about what I'm supposed to do. And once I do that, I live very satisfied and very at peace. Absolutely. I'm very unoften finding myself at a loss for words, but you just, you encapsulate everything I feel so well. You convey it with such accuracy, with such passion. I'm right there with you on everything. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, that's why I say those 50 years between us are nothing more than chronological years. Mm -hmm. And you will see into the future many things I'll never see. And I'm really grateful. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things that are going to happen yeah. are going to be like they are today. Mm. It The world is not going to become paradise until Jesus comes back mm. and comes back for the thousand year reign and we will be part of it mm -hmm. because we love him because we're going to live in eternity with him okay Absolutely. we have that what a gift I will for the life of me never understand anybody who would reject that who thinks that you know going out and and living in bars and mm -hmm. and making their own choices and shooting up town and burning down buildings and hating is more important than accepting you have a loving God and he offers you eternity mm. in paradise? Really? I My heart goes out to him. I pray for them every day. I mm. pray very, very humbly to the Lord to remove the the mask, mm. the curtain from their eyes so that they might see him and know his goodwill and his love and the peace beyond under all understanding that he will give them. Absolutely. If you could go back in time, 2,000 years, and see Christ in the flesh. Oh, my goodness. What would you want to ask him? a deep question what would i ask him i'm thinking about this deeply because it's real easy to say to save the world to this to that it's unrealistic i want to ask him something that's real mm. i want to ask him something that imparts enough knowledge for people to see him more clearly when they make their decision that 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 he can reveal um you know to the world but what else can he reveal he's given us his word mm. he sent jesus mm. he's forgiven our sins i guess the only question i can think of is how can you love us and how can you give us all you have when we are so hurtful to you. Wow. There is an analogous relationship that I've just now realized between Christ and Trump, and I don't want to make any kind of blasphemous remark here, so I want to say this as carefully as I can. Right. Jesus Christ came down to earth. He sacrificed his own comfort up in heaven. Right. He came down here in the form of flesh right. to give us an opening, a door into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Donald Trump, a billionaire living in heaven on earth. Right. This man was so comfortable. And he decided to walk away from his billionaire lifestyle and sign up for the absolutely most hated, most critical, the most attacked position you could possibly be in on this planet. And he could have just lived the rest of his life doing whatever he wanted. Absolutely. Having scallops and sea urchins and playing golf. But <laughs> yeah, you don't like seafood. No. Bad analogy. Yeah. Tomahawk steaks. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. Yeah, there we go. 
And I see something beautiful about that. And I think that's one of the best things that Christ wanted us to do is be Christ-like, to learn from what he's done and offer ourselves up in the same way. Exactly. Trump sacrificed himself. He gave himself to the people. I really admire that. And his whole family has. Mm. They've all had to endure it. And, you know, you asked earlier about the, the shooting and the, the attempted assassination. You know, um, God saved him because he knows that he has to, to sacrifice himself. Donald J. Trump has to sacrifice everything he has and everything he will ever have in order to save this nation. Not because he's Jesus, not because he's, you know, but just like we as believers must be bold finally. We need to be bold finally mm -hmm. and say no more. Donald Trump knows that he has to sacrifice all that he's done and built in his life in order to save this country. If you can't respect that, how can you have respect for anything? Mm. If you can't respect God's chosen person to save this country, if you can't respect um, the word of the Bible, what do you respect? Mm. Where do you stand? Mm. I, I, um, I, it saddens me when I hear the horrible stories of what's happening to our children in this country and how now there's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of missing children mm. that were coming from other countries to here. We can only imagine what, what has happened to them. And with the sex trafficking happening, and sadly, our country is, is the one that is in the most perverted position and has done the most with that because it's not before they get here. All of them happen. A lot of them, it's happening right here in our country. A lot of it. And it just, you know, President Trump, he wants so bad to save those children. He wants so bad to feed the hungry, the people that live here, his own citizens, not the people that have been allowed to come and invade our country. He wants to save the veterans mm. that are struggling. Look how much he did for the veterans when he was in last time. Look at the fact that four years he was in out of 20 years, the last 20 years, we've had a man for four years that stood looking up, not just into themselves. Mm -hmm. You can say you what you want about the fact that he has money. They're doing their best to take it all away from him. Mm. Frankly, America... It doesn't stop him. Mm -hmm. It's a business. The government is a business, and who better to run it than a businessman? So for any of his detractors picking money as the primary way to try to bring this guy down, I think it's because they ran out of other things to look for. They went through the closets, couldn't find skeletons, so they had to go for the most... Just ineffective option. Yep. And, you know, Trump, he's one of the only presidents ever, I believe, in history. I think he's the only one who's rejected his salary and donates all of it to the veterans. That's right. And the media doesn't cover it. Why do you think the media is so bent on trying to attack him and not the left? Well, now you've brought up my subject that galls me the most. Mm. I believe that if we'd quit fighting each other and we'd get rid of the media, we'd be a lot happier mm. and we'd be a lot better off. The news used to be when I was a kid, it was 
telling the facts of what happened. Nobody threw in the juicy or the innuendo or the sex about it or the the um, uh, excitement and entertainment and threw in, you know, um, all of these questions. They just spoke the facts. If it was a baseball game, they gave you the score. If it was about politics and who's running, they said who was running and where they are that day. They didn't reread it, rewrite it, and give you their version of what they said of anything. We don't hear the news. We don't get the facts. We hear opinions. And the opinions always lean left because the left owns the media. If you're listening to the news, you are listening to a loaded gun that's pointed at your head. And it is telling you what to believe in and who to hate and who to like. Mm. And the biggest target on anybody is on Donald J. Trump because they know that he would save this country again, that he would make it better, that he'd bring your prices down in gas and and everything else and food especially. He would make sure you had a roof over your head at night. He would make sure that the mines were opened for coal and more were dug and the, the, uh, Oil would run again everywhere it needs to in this country. He would bring up our economy by selling it to other countries. He would bring down the price of cost of living for the people that deserve, that have worked hard all their lives. That's where the target is. And it comes directly from the media. If I was going to be giving Donald Trump advice today, I'd tell him when you go in, Shut down the media. Mm. Shut it down. Tell the people the truth. Yep. Let's get some media that states the facts. Let's put some um, laws and what is it they call it? Um, The Congress votes on things they write up. I can't think. Legislature. You know, let's write some legislation on what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do and how they are to conduct themselves and how they're not allowed to be partiality towards people, how they're not all supposed to be under the thumb of not only the government, but of anybody who disagrees with God's children. Mm. Because they want to get rid of God. They want to get rid of religion. They don't want us to speak of it. Or, you know, we are being attacked in our own country by our government because the government has taken over. It isn't a matter of, you know, is it in the Constitution or not? They threw the Constitution out the door. Yep. People need to understand The media is the bad omen. It's the bad, evil doings. They are going to stretch your heart and, 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 and burn up your brain cells Mm. with all of the ugliness that they've got going. And then it moves on from the media into the, uh, the politics and the politicians onto the, the communities, the states, it, it's infiltrated into everything. Shut it down by writing legislation that stops them from being able to say and impart their own opinions on what's happening in our country. Please get us back to making our own decisions. I want to feel like I live in a free country again. And our God is powerful enough to put a man that he knows called Donald J. Trump in power to shut them down. Wow. That is a great way to handle things. I think Absolutely. That's, awesome. that's the first thing 
that I, I would ask him to do is to help him get the right people in place right now, writing the legislature before day one, before he goes and, and gets inaugurated, have the legislation ready to say, you cannot do this, that, and the other. And all of you, please, from the bottom of my heart, I beg you, sign up and vote. Because if you sign up and vote, we will stop this evil in this land. Mm. Absolutely. And if we stop the evil in the land, meaning the media, and we get to start making our own decisions, and we get to get back to praying for what we want and loving the God that has given you everything you've got. Everything you've got, every breath you take comes from him. If you would just love and respect him, you would live a happy, fulfilled life. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. I love all of that. I really do. It's so important that we make an effort to hold our media accountable. Absolutely. They have such a huge influence on the monolithic thought of the people. Yeah. After the Cold War, the intelligence agencies all started ideologically subverting each other. Mm -hmm. Laurel Canyon, the CIA set up and they started all these rock bands so they could start the hippie movement so they could could control the anti-war movement. All these guys doing drugs and then it keeps evolving. And today we look at this world that's become so degenerate. Everywhere we look, and the problem with degeneracy, particularly in the media, is the way that it works is that when you shock someone for the first time on the news or with a movie, the next time that person sees something, their threshold is here for shock. You can't show them the same thing and expect the same results. So what does the media constantly have to strive to do is shock us more and more and more to the point where we all become desensitized and callous of the problems in this country. That's what they're doing. It's so awful. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I told you, and you've mentioned my my ability to see into the future and stuff. I'll never forget. I can tell you what house I lived in. I, I could probably tell you what I was wearing that day. I was in my uh, probably mid-20s when I saw on TV one day this man jumping off of a bridge to commit suicide. And they were showing him at the top of the bridge. He crawled up all the way to the highest point. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then I realized, because they started saying this, well, you know, we can now take our, we have the ability to put all of our equipment on a truck and go out to the actual scene of what is happening and show just like we have John, you know, and he's up on the top of the bridge and he's getting ready to jump off. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what if his wife has the TV on? Oh, what, what if... What if his family, his children, what if his neighbors, oh my goodness, they gave his name. They said he was up there and, and, and he was going to jump and, and they were trying to get a speaker of all things up there to him to ask him why he was doing it. And I am having palpitations of the heart and in tears because I could see the horror of what they were doing. And I was like, you know, this is horrible. You're you're applauding yourselves and patting yourselves on the back because now you can go out and you can show live people dying and you think that's good? Mm. And I realized right there and then that as this kept up, people would become less and less caring Mm. and more and more numb. And more and more dumbed down. And pray less for that other person. And care less for them. Because it would become normal. Mm -hmm. And look where we are today. It's horrible. It is. It is. But there's hope. And I think that's why we're here. Because we believe this can be turned around. We know it can. 
That's right. That's right. We know it. And we're going to be part of it. We're going to be proud of it. And, and we are going to continue to fight the good fight mm -hmm. and stand for our Lord and Savior. And there was one other thing that I wanted to point out to people about why it's so important to vote. Mm. When you vote, you are speaking more words than you can even imagine. And you are touching more people than you can even grasp. And in a sense, it doesn't become about you at all anymore. It becomes about the whole world. So if you don't vote, you're allowing the world to keep spiraling downward toward hell. You have opened the door for the devil to take more control of this country. You have to understand the impact of your non-action if you love God and you go to church, or even if you stay home and watch it on TV, if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, like God tells you to, if you want to get back to freedom for the children, for the future generations, you must take action because that's what God gave me in the vision six years ago. It's not about words. It's not reading a book and getting knowledge. It's not talking to everybody and saying how horrible things are and how disgusted you are and how somebody should do something. It's about you and me and everybody that will ever hear this taking action. Mm. Don't think of this as a vote. This is you taking action to make your whole world become better. It is you making a decision for yourself, your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. You cannot say that you love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't go and sign up and vote, that's my final word. Excellent. Elaine, thank you so much for allowing me to give you this interview. This has been so informative, inspiring, emotional, educational, and ultimately I think this is going to show the people your heart. And I don't think anyone is ever going to have a full idea of how magical you are. <laughs> until they get to really be in your presence. Thank you. But this, I think, is a good slimmer, a good piece right. of who is Elaine Beck. Are you going to play the game with me now before we go? Oh, yeah. Let's end it on a lighthearted note. Yeah, That's let's perfect. let's do. Let's, let's have some fun. Okay. So this game is describe this person in one word. Okay. Name a few people. You just try to tell me what you think about them in one word. It's going to be word. difficult. Okay. Donald Trump. Magnificent. Agreed. Kamala. Evil. Yep. Elon Musk. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Volodymyr Zelensky. That's another word for evil. <laughs> <laughs> Nefarious. Kim Jong-un. Desperate. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kanye West. Misunderstood. I agree. I agree. Joe Biden. Failure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hunter Biden. Degenerate. Yes. Anthony Fauci. Evil magnified. <laughs> oh, that was two words. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's perfect. We'll put a hyphen between the two. Okay. All right. Candace Owens. Precious. I agree. I agree. Jordan Peterson. A friend. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I want to throw out a couple you might not have heard of. Okay. Kendrick Lamar. No. That's okay. We'll skip. Bill Gates. Terrible. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Charlie Kirk. Futuristic. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And my personal favorite, Elaine Beck. Don't know her. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, you do a great show. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I learned from the best. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you.